many people often confuse the difference between application software and system software. Typically, a system software is also known as an operating system. So these are software that actually manages uh, the hardware of a computer, whereas application softwares are used by the users. So from the diagram, you can see some images are showing examples of system software like Android, Windows, and for the application software, you can see the browser, Chrome, and of course you have YouTube icon. Now all these are categories of softwares. So in this particular uh, tutorial, we are going to dive deep into understanding the various features of system software and application software. Of course, we're also going to look at maybe at the examples of these different types of software and ideally their functions. So if you're interested in this kind of a tutorial, kindly hang on till the end of this particular video so that you learn more about these two different types of uh, softwares. All right, happy learning. Hi, Lana. Hello and welcome once again uh, to Lana's Coach. So today we're going to look at the difference between a uh, system software and an application software. Of course, we're going to mention other types of softwares. In between, also we're going to look at examples of these particular softwares and have a critical look at the environment that you can use either system software or an application software. So before that, if you're joining us for the very first time, I feel welcome and also don't forget to subscribe. So let's look at what a computer uh, software is, right? So a software is basically a set of programs yeah, which are des designed to actually uh, carry out a specific functions like you're going to look at. So now that you have said that we're going to look at the different uh, the difference between the system software and application software as you can see from the diagram yeah we can see we have examples of system softwares i'm also going to show you uh, examples of application uh, softwares the picture that resembles a uh, dove <laughs> or a rather bird that one is uh, linux yeah and of course we have windows these are just typical examples of system uh, softwares so as we proceed this particular diagram is going to help us understand uh, the environment that this particular or how this particular uh, two softwares are implemented, right? So always remember that a software is a collection of instructions that enable the user uh, to interact with the computer and uh, its hardware uh, to perform some specific uh, tasks. So at the top, you are the user. So the user interacts with what we refer to as the application software, right? So we are going to look at the examples of application software such as Word. So normally as a user, you, are, you will always interact with application softwares and not operating system. Now operating system is also referred to as the system uh, software. At the bottom, you can say we have the hardware. So that means operating system is closer to the hardware, whereas the application software is closer to the to the user so that's these are key difference between the system software and application uh, software so again we can look at this diagram and establish that a user will always uh, interact with the hardware courtesy of the system the operating system so we can't really interact with the hardware if the operating system uh, is not uh, there so that this particular diagram is going to uh, maybe create a, re a very nice building block for us to understand the difference between application software and the system uh, software. So you can see under the system software, we also have different categories. And one major uh, category is the operating system, right? We also have programming software and utility uh, softwares. In application software, we have examples such as spreadsheet, Word, and so on. So, Ideally, the difference between uh, system software and application software is that in system software, it helps manage the computer hardware, right, or the computer itself, as you have looked at this particular diagram, right? And of course, application software, it allows you as a user to accomplish specific tasks, right? Like if you want to type something, you'll need to have a word, uh, word application software, Right. If you need to browse to the internet, you need to have a web browser such as Chrome. Right. So we are going to look at keenly the difference between the two as we proceed. Now let's look at the features of a system software.
from the diagram, if you can recall, it is close to the system, right, or the hardware. It is uh, fast in speed. Actually, when a system software initializes, it initializes very, very fast. Now, they are very difficult to design. Looking at the nature of how we need to maybe program and them, they are also difficult to understand because of the languages that are being used, right, and the steep learning curve that is required to design them. Of course, they are less interactive, yeah, compared to the application software, system softwares. Uh, they don't have the very interactive graphical user interface. They are always often smaller in size, right? The size of a system software cannot be compared with application software. Once you create a system software, it's uh, less likely that maybe you're going to add a lot of features, right? Uh, it's also difficult to manipulate, right? Yeah, for you to be able to uh, have the core, right, of this particular system software and uh, manipulate it is very difficult. Though we have the open source that allows you to maybe freely, um, I mean, freely manipulate uh, its operating system. Then they are generally created or written in low level languages, yeah, such as Java and so on. So these are just key features of a system uh, software. The examples of uh, computer softwares in general, we can have programming languages, uh, spreadsheets, utilities, operating system. So you can see examples of operating system. We have Mac OS, Windows XP, Windows 7, and so on. Now, as I mentioned, uh, the other name for system software can always be uh, equated or equivalent is equivalent to operating uh, system. So operating system, as you can see, it allows communication uh, between other programs and the hardware. When you talk about operating system or system software, we cut, it cuts across. We have computer system softwares and of course we have mobile uh, system softwares. So for mobile we can have Android and such. Uh, for and of course we can also have windows uh, for computers we can have linux right and so on and so forth so operating systems yeah you will always install them within your a smartphone or you can install them within your computers right so that at least they handle uh, that the those particular hardware remember hardware cannot itself function within the without the operating uh, system so I normally look at uh, operating system as the blood of the computer, right? So that at least it allows uh, some kind of seamless communication between the hardware and other installed uh, programs. So as you can see, we have additional examples of operating system from the mobile platform and from the computer platform. Talk about unix windows and so on. of course this list is not updated we have the latest version such as windows 11 right and so on so i'll share the link so that at least you can get familiar with a, a lot of uh, or examples of this particular operating system so in a nutshell functions of an operating system first as you have seen it helps manage or handle hardware resources right it also provides the interface between the user and the machine so the user cannot interact to direct with the hardware without the operating system and of course it provides security yeah before you interact with your computer normally you'll have to enter your username and password right and of course it allows you to have some kind of uh, i normally refer to them as first aid kit of the computer those are the utility softwares yeah so before a computer starts functioning it has to load the various essential utility programs such as disk cleanup and so on and of course generally it makes the hardware perform the functionality that it requires right so uh, ideally these are the functions that i've already mentioned we yeah, are providing user interface providing security and of course loading the various essential utility uh, programs when and why should you select a particular operating system, right? What informs you of the choice of operating system that you need to actually uh, maybe purchase or install? Of course, the application that is going to run them, right? The kind of hardware, look at the compatibility aspects, right? And of course, the execution time, how quickly do you expect this particular operating system to be executed? 
how is it easy for users to learn or and operate this particular uh, operating uh, system based on the environment is it reliable to achieve the kind of tasks that people are undertaking are you able to afford it the cost factor also needs to be put into perspective and of course the technical support right you can't really purchase a particular operating system if you don't know how to uh, maybe uh, handle some kind of malfunctions so you need to have some technical aspect uh, support uh, maybe online or offline and so on so those are what informs us of the kind of operating system that you need to select that is done as far as system software is concerned now let's look at application software remember it is closer to the user right so this means it will always help user perform some functions of tasks right examples of this particular software as you can see from the diagram we have browsers we have windows applications media players and so on right features of an application software of course it's closer to the user unlike the system software which is closer to the hardware it's easy to design and that's why we have very many application softwares we refer to them as apps yeah they are more interactive users like graphic you know, very nice graphical user interface yeah they are slow in speed maybe because of the very many features that they have they are generally written in high level language yeah? english like languages that's why even a common user or a novice can be able to just drag and drop and create some apps they are easy to understand and of course manipulating them is very very uh, easy now why is it that they are bigger in size because as you create and maybe add a lot of stuff to this particular application software their size keep on increasing and that's why you are always told that for example if you're using an app such as photoshop right you need to have a large storage uh, area so that at least you handle the ever increasing uh, stuff that is being uh, executed within these application softwares so in a nutshell examples as you can see we have the words the excels powerpoints inventory manage the list is endless application softwares are very many even the whatsapp uh, software that we're using that is an app right like here we can see we have the microsoft excel as an example all right so ladies and gentlemen that actually informs us of the difference between the application software and the system software so take into consideration the various features and functionality of this particular application softwares and of course their examples as always don't fail to subscribe all right thanks